S. The Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with the music of Carl Hoff and his orchestra, our singing star, Amy Arnell, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who, when caught putting a stick of dynamite in his Uncle Artie Stebbins' hat, because he heard him say he felt like blowing his top, calmly said, I'm a bad boy! <laughs> I fly through the air with the greatest of ease I'm the little fat man on the flying trapeze it makes me feel good to hang by my knees But it would be awful if I had to sneeze yeah. <laughs> I'll say it would be Costello, Costello for heaven's sakes What is that outfit you've got on? Uh, I'm going to join a circus These are my circus tights Circus tights? Yeah That thing you are wearing is nothing but a suit of long underwear Long underwear? Yes I thought I had an awful big hip pocket <laughs> <laughs> Go take that outfit off and forget about the circus. Oh, but I can't forget about the circus, Abbott. Why not? I come from a family of circus people. My Uncle Artie Stebbins was the world's greatest tightrope walker until he broke his neck. How did he break his neck? One night he got up to walk the rope. He was tight and the rope wasn't. <laughs> Boom! Will you please talk, <laughs> talk sense, Costello. Oh, then I had another uncle in the circus. He was seven feet tall. Seven feet tall? Yeah, he used to stick his head in the lion's mouth. What's his name? Now we call him Shorty. Sh Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> Costello, what, what could you possibly do in a circus? Oh, I like to take care of the animals. I love animals, Abbott. I know that. Just consider the elephant. Oh, what's so marvelous about the elephant? I wrote a poem about elephants. You did? Let's hear Elephants it. are useful friends. They have handles on both hands. When elephants travel, they don't have to pack. They have a trunk in the front and a suitcase in back. <laughs> Costello, will you stop this nonsense, please? But really, I love animals, Abbott. Yesterday, I was watching a circus parade, and an old mama kangaroo was crying her heart out. So I walked up to her, and I said, poor mother kangaroo, why are you crying? And she says, my son ran away and left me holding the bag. <laughs> that's all, cangaroo. that's all. I've heard enough. Ah, oh, big cut. Go ahead. Oh, Abbott, I love all animals except the whiff's enough. Yeah, well, that's... Whiff's enough? What's that? That's a little animal with black fur with a white stripe down its back. You idiot, that's a skunk. That's what I said. A witch enough. A witch enough. Oh. <laughs> Costello, you know absolutely nothing about wild animals. Tell me, have you ever had a biting, kicking, clawing wild thing in your grasp? Yeah, last night at the Palladium. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and did I get scratched? No, I don't mean Woo! that. I mean, <laughs> you don't seem to understand. I mean, have you ever been big game hunting? Oh, I do that every night on Hollywood Boulevard. You go game hunting on Hollywood Boulevard? I beg your pardon, I thought you said dame hunting. No, 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 no. <laughs> Please answer my question. Uh, have you ever come face to face with a savage animal in the jungle? Now you're talking my language, Abbott. One time I climbed up a tree and I bagged a ferocious lion. You went up a tree after a lion? No, he come up after me. But, <laughs> but you said you bagged him. I did. I bagged him to go away. <laughs> Then what happened? Then my mother came, my brother came to my rescue, and I finally brought the line home stuffed. Uh, what was he stuffed with? My brother. With your, your brother. <laughs> Costello, if you're so fearless, if you're so fearless around wild animals, you don't have to join a circus. I can get you a job here in the next Tarzan picture with Johnny Weismuller and Maureen O'Sullivan. Oh, do I have to make love to Miss O'Sullivan? No, Weismuller does that. Oh, I see. I'm just one of O'Sullivan's heels. Uh, yeah, no, 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 Costello. <laughs> you're going to be the stunt man. You see, in this picture, Weismuller is supposed to save Miss O'Sullivan. <laughs> are you listening to me? I'm listening. I said that My Weism tights are falling down. Well, pull them up. Come out with those kind of things. On there. <laughs> you be wearing those kind of tights. What's wrong with you? Now, listen to this. Weismuller is supposed to save Miss O'Sullivan from a man-eating lion. Yeah. But instead, he calls for you to fight the lion. How loud can he call? Why? I'll be in Patterson, New Jersey. <laughs> Costello, this lion is tame So am I, but I get hungry oh, I know How much money do I get for fighting the lion? Oh, what do you care about the money? It's the experience you need Now, now here's the scene You're my stuntman, and I'm Johnny Weismuller You're Johnny Weismuller? Yeah, yes You must have left your muscles home in your other suit No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just trying to paint you a picture Well, don't smear it up in the middle yeah, All right, well, keep quiet a minute, please 
Now, we're going through the jungle on all fours. Mm -hmm. First, I slunk through the bushes. Then you slunk through the bushes. Then I slunk again. You the... slunk twice as much as I well, do. Right. <laughs> well, Are you sure that ain't slink? I slink again? Now, never mind. What's the difference? A lot of differences. No keep... joke now. Will you keep quiet? <laughs> Listen, I'm not looking for jokes. Now, keep quiet. I'm serious. I'm, I've got you out in the jungle. Now, keep quiet. And are you lost? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> now, watch, watch your step, please. Watch your step and follow me. Come on. Wait a minute. Was that, was that a lion? Well, it wasn't something I yet. <laughs> Quick, peek through the bushes there. Do you see anything? Yeah, there's a mama lion and a papa lion. Where are the cubs? They're playing Brooklyn this week. <laughs> Watch out, Costello, here comes a lion. What am I going to do? <laughs> do? Do whatever the lion does. Yeah, he's staring at you. I'm staring back at him. He's showing his teeth. I'm showing my teeth. He's wagging his tail. That lets me out. I lay out. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly the lion sees Mr. Sullivan, and he gets ready to spring. Move in closer, Costello, so he'll get you instead. Wait a minute. How much money am I getting for this? Oh, what do you care about the money? It's the experience you need. <laughs> Here comes a lion. Quicksand! Quicksand! What do you mean, quicksand? Quick! Send for help! Stand where you are, Costello. Stand where you are. As the lion runs by you, grab him by the mane. The mane what? Mane, mane, lion's neck. Let him neck. I'm not in the mood. Look, quick. <laughs> quick, Costello, grab the lion in your bare hand. Wait a minute. How much money did you say I'm getting? What do you care about the money? It's the experience you need. Finally, you defeat the lion. There he goes, slinking through the That's bushes. That's better, slinking through the bushes. Never mind, slinking us, slushing it, makes no difference. Slinking through the bushes. Even the lion slinks in this picture. Well, that laid that. Now, now I'm still... lost, too. <laughs> oh, Sullivan is so happy, he throws her... <laughs> she throws herself into the hero's arms and kisses him. That's what I've been waiting for. Come into my arms, babe. Wait a minute, Costello. Wise Muller is a hero. You're just a stuntman. But I saved her life. Why can't I kiss her? You're not being paid to kiss her. What do I care about the money? It's the experience I need. Have you heard? According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Yes, more doctors named camels than any other cigarette when three leading impartial research organizations surveyed 113,000 597 doctors from coast to coast. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor, was the query. And the brand most named by doctors was Camel. Well, doctors, like all of us, smoke for pleasure. The rich, full flavor and cool mildness of Camel's costlier tobaccos are just as appealing to their tastes and throats as to millions of tastes and throats the world around. If you yourself are not smoking Camels now, well, try them on your tea zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat. Perhaps you, too, will find that camels suit your tea zone to a T. Carl Hoff and the Camel Orchestra featured the top rhythm favorite, Sioux City Sioux. Costello, you finally got a job in the circus, eh? Yeah, stick around, Abbott, until I get through watering these elephants. Here, Jumbo, here's your first bucketful. 
Well, come on, Jumbo. Do I have to stick your head in the bucket? Costello, the other end is his trunk. Oh, oh yeah. I have a hold of his police. <laughs> Here you are, Jumbo. <laughs> hey, yo, Jumbo. Don't squirt that water all over me, Jumbo. You do that again and I'll tie a knot in your trunk. <laughs> Jumbo, I tell you what I do. Well, Costello, did you tie a knot in his trunk? Yeah. Well, what do you know? He tied a knot in my nose. <laughs> well, come on, you're through with the elephants. Let's go over to the midway and have some fun, huh? Hurry, hurry, step right up, folks. The greatest array of freaks in the world. <laughs> Come in and see the Ubangi, the only girls in the world that can lick an envelope after it's in the mailbox. Hey, you fat boy. Dip in and see the snake charmer, the human skeleton, the tattooed lady, all for a quarter. Uh, I wouldn't pay a quarter to go in there. Say, ain't you Lou Costello? That's me. You can go in for nothing. Courtesy, they're all freaks. <laughs> Gee, how did you happen to become a dog face boy? When I was a baby, I was scared by an Airedale. What's your excuse? <laughs> Well, I was. Get out of here! Hey, Costello, who is that young lady waving to us? You boy! Oh, it's the actress, Bessie Mimucho. Hello, Bessie. Oh, I'm having such a jolly time here, looking at all the attractions. Could I offer you boys some of my croaker jock? Croaker jock? Ah, uh, sure, Abby. You know what croaker jock is. That's poop cor peep corn. Peep uh. <laughs> corn. Right, Mucho. Miss Mucho, have you seen any of the wild animals? Oh, yes. I saw the monkeys, the baboons, and the crocodiles. Oh, where did you see the alligators and the hip on top of the omnibus? <laughs> Mr. Costello, you talk so quaint. Do you by any chance come from Alabama? No, I come from Poodleson, New Jersey. <laughs> Well, I'm going into the main tent to see the acrobots perform. A bonsoir, monsieur, to you. And a bony squaw and a sword to you, too. <laughs> help, mother! Please, help! Well, uh, holy smoke, Costello, our old friend, Scotty. Hey, Scotty, come here. What's the matter? I'm going to sue the circus. I was watching the bareback rider, and somebody stepped on my face. Oh, how could, anybody, <laughs> how could anybody step on your face? Well, I was crawling under the tent at the time. <laughs> uh, the whole circus is a fake anyway, laddies. I just bought a big bag of cotton candy. Well, what's the matter with it? It was pot rayon. <laughs> well, that is, I got to go find a place to sleep here at the circus. Scotty, you mean you're going to sleep out here at the circus grounds tonight? Aye, laddie. I can ride into town with a parade tomorrow and save car fare. Hoot, man, laddies. <laughs> on me, gentlemen. I'm the India rubber man. Have a smoke on me. Gee, thanks, India rubber man. This is a big day in my life, boys. Congratulate me. Oh, you have an addition to your family? Yes. My wife just presented me with a seven-pound hot water bottle. <laughs> I bet if his wife ever has twins, it'll be a pair of rubber boots. <laughs> oh, no, never mind him. Here comes the peanut lady. I've always wanted to meet one of them. Hey, Abbott, there's no such thing. That's a man. No, it isn't. Here, I'll prove it to you. Hello, bearded lady. Hello. <clears throat> You're not really a lady. You're a man, ain't you? Oh, darn it. A fella can never keep a secret. <laughs> Costello, is everything around this circus a phony? No, look, here comes something genuine. It's the biggest attraction in the circus habit, the human skeleton. Hello, skeleton. I beg your pardon. Uh-uh, it's Mrs. Niles. Now, just a moment, Costello. Are you implying that my wife is skinny? Ken, if she swallowed a bottle of olives, she'd look like a string of beads. Costello, <laughs> remember, you're working here. Now, if you insult the customers, you'll lose your job. Now, remember oh, that. Oh, Costello, so you're with the circus, eh? Why aren't you in your cage? Well, I just stepped out. <laughs> Mrs. Niles, maybe I only have a little job now bringing water to the elephants, but next week I'll have a bigger job. A bigger job? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to wash the elephants. <laughs> next week you may not be with the circus. My wife happens to be chairman of the women's charity club that was responsible for this circus. Yes, Costello. I'll have you know that I helped bring this circus to town. What did you do? Pull one of the wagons? <laughs> Now, just a minute, Costello. You can't compare my wife to a horse. You're right, Ken. Her ears are too long. 
<laughs> Kenneth, did you hear what he said? My ears is too long. Are you going to let him get by with that? No, dear. Costello, that should read, her ears are too long. <laughs> that education aisle, just because you're running for mayor of Studio City, what are you going to be, the old gray mayor? <laughs> Never mind him, Kenneth. Costello, I'm going to the manager of this circus and have you thrown off the lot. Don't do that, Mrs. Niles. Please don't get me fired. I need the money for my animals. Last year, I went in the rabbit business and I lost a lot of money. You did? Yes, ma'am. I bought two rabbits. And do you know how many rabbits I have now? How many? Two. The man didn't tell me they were brothers. <laughs> Picture this. Black night. A city asleep. It's three o'clock in the morning. Darkness. Darkness except for one intense and concentrated blaze of light. A white searching light high in a tall building. The building is a hospital, and it's an emergency case. That light says doctors at work. 24 hours a day, the doctor stands sentry duty guarding the health and welfare of mankind. He doesn't want bouquets. He isn't interested in making speeches and taking bows on the magnificent job he does. He's just interested in doing that job with all the skill and devotion he has. The makers of camels cannot help but take great pride in the standing of this cigarette with the men of the medical profession. In a recent nationwide survey of 113,597 doctors conducted by three leading impartial research organizations, this query was put forth. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand most named was camels. Yes? According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. For camel fans everywhere, here is lovely Amy Arnell to sing. Shoe fly pie, an apple pan, dowdy makes your eyes light up. Your tummy say howdy, shoe fly pie, an apple pan, dowdy, I never get enough of that wonderful stuff. Shoe fly pie, an apple pan, dowdy makes the sun come out. When heavens are cloudy, shoe fly pie, an apple pan, dowdy, I never get enough of that wonderful stuff mama when you bake mama i don't want cake mama for my sake Go to the oven and make some ever loving shoe fly pie. An apple pan, dowdy makes your eyes light up. Your tummy say howdy, shoe fly pie. An apple pan, dowdy, I never get enough of that wonderful stuff. Shoe fly pie, an apple pan, dowdy makes your eyes light up. Your tummy say howdy, shoe fly pie, an apple pan, dowdy, I never get enough of that shoe fly. I never get enough of that wonderful stuff. What is it, Mrs. Niles? Where is Costello? I have something to tell that young man. Uh, Costello, where are you? Hey, here I am, here I am. I, I was over by the bear's cage feeding the little cubs some cookies. You're giving cookies to the bear cubs? Yeah, they were cub cakes. Uh, <laughs> why do the writers make me say things like that? Uh, Costello, I went to the manager and told him that you insulted me. And this time, young man, I think I have fixed your wagon. And you got just the wagon tongue that can do it. <laughs> Costello, she's trying to tell you that you're going to be fired. Mrs. Niles, why did you have to go and do that? I didn't really mean what I said. I think you're really a beautiful woman. You have lips just like petals. Uh, rose petal? No, bicycle petals. <laughs> oh, I've never been so insulted in all my life. I'm going right back to the manager. Well, Costello, what are you going to do now? Uh, who cares about her? Hey, look, Abbott. Look. Look over there. 
The dancing girls are coming out on the midway. Come on. All right, folks. Step right up and meet that great dancing girl, Princess Zaza. Zaza? Zaza. Zaza, pretty name. <laughs> now the Princess Zaza has the cleverest pair of feet in the world of Tuxicory. But I warn you, don't watch her feet too closely or miss her dance. And here, folks, is the lovely princess in person. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I will fill any request numbers. Now, what would you like for me to do? Come on over here and kiss your poor old father. <laughs> oh, you are such a cute little man, monsieur. Ah, Princess Zaza, you have a figure like Venus. For that, you may hold my hand. You are as beautiful as Helen of Troy. For that, you may put your arm around my waist. You are as bewitching as Cleopatra. For that, you may squeeze me. If I could only think of a couple of more names. <laughs> oh, you are... <laughs> you are really such a cute little man, but you are too fat. You should take setting up exercises. I wouldn't have to take them if I was set up like you. Uh, Castelli, you're holding up the show. Yes, folks, step up, get your tickets on the inside. You'll see the princess dance, and what a dance! She moves her muscles in every direction. Are you going to buy a ticket, little fat boy? Yeah, but don't move anything until I get there. <laughs> hey, hey, what's going on out here? What's going on? Oh, it's you, Costello. I've been looking for you. What are you doing here, Melonhead? I'm the manager of this circus, Abbott. All my life, I've spent under the big canvas. Don't look now, but your head is pushing through it. <laughs> Costello, I don't want any more cracks about my shiny dome. You'd better get it back to the crystal gazer before she misses it. Look, I up. see a board in that head. Never mind. <laughs> about the head. Now, look here, Costello. I didn't come here to argue with you. I've had a complaint about you for Mrs. Niles, and you're fired. Now, get off the lot. Please, Mr. Melonhead, don't make me leave my animals. I love them all. I even love that Dangaroos Kippawa in that cage. Dangaroos Kippawa? That says dangerous. Keep away. <laughs> Please, Melonhead, give Costello another job. <laughs> you don't have to give him any uh, M O N E Y. Well, all right. But he don't get any W A G E S. You guys don't have to spell in front of me. I don't like candy anyway. <laughs> well, Costello, I'll give you one more chance. I've got just the job for you. You see that hole in the canvas there? I want you to stick your head through it. What for? Well, you'll see a lot of people on the other side with baseballs in their hands. Now, when you stick your head through the canvas, the game starts. Hey, Abbott, I'm going to see a baseball game. Maybe if I use my head, I can get one of those balls. All right, folks, step right up and hit the little boy on the head. And now, folks, step right up and hit the little boy on the head. Wait a minute. <laughs> hit what boy on whose head? He means you, Costello. People throw baseballs at your head. Yeah, and if they hit you on the head, they get a pound of sugar. And all I get is a lump. Don't be silly. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get hurt. Now... What happened to the boy that had this job before me? Here he comes now. Step aside and let the stretcher get by. <laughs> hey! Hey, just a minute. I want to ask that kid on the stretcher a question. Hey, boy, how do you feel? Is your head all right? Oh, yes, it's perfectly all right. I feel absolutely normal. And I'm so happy you came to see me, Miss Lamar. <laughs> Brother, let me out of here, Rabbit. I'm getting out of here. Costello, stay where you are. Keep your head in that hole. That's right, Costello. Now, here, I'll throw a few practice balls to show you how simple the game is. Get ready, Costello. Here comes the ball. <laughs> Costello, get up. Get up off your knees and quit picking up that popcorn. What popcorn? I'm picking up my teeth. <laughs> I quit. Oh, a coward, huh? I'll show you who's a coward, Melonhead. <laughs> you got me into this, and I'm going to set with you. I dare you to take your coat off. Oh, yeah? There. My coat's off. And my coat's off. I do you take off your shirt. Oh, yeah? There. My shirt's off. My shirt's off. All right, now, what are you going to do about it? I'll scratch your back if you'll scratch mine. <laughs> help! Help! Please, help! Hey, help. Costello. Costello, that's Ken Niles yelling. Help! Help! Somebody do something. What's the matter? Oh, my lovely wife dropped her purse in the lion's cage, and she went in after it. She's in there alone with the lions. Those poor lions. They'll have to defend themselves. <laughs> Come on, Costello. We haven't got a minute to lose. Open the door and let Costello in. Yeah, open that door. And you... <laughs> 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 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. I just happen to think I gotta see Princess Zaza right away. But we've got to wrestle the lion. You wrestle what you like, and I'll wrestle what I like. <laughs> Get in there, Costello. Here comes the lion, Costello. Grab him. All right, all right. I got you, I got you. Thought you were tough, eh? Take that. Hey, our rabbit, there was nothing to it. She's an old lion. I got my hand ram right down her throat. Look, she hasn't even got any teeth. Costello, you fool, take your hand out of my mouth. <laughs> Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, tonight's salute to the men in the armed forces who won through to victory. Tonight, we hail the men of Air Transport Evacuation Squadron 1, commended for outstanding heroism by the Secretary of the Navy, for evacuating over 9,600 casualties from Okinawa, and for delivering over 2 million pounds of vitally needed war material to the island in the face of hazardous weather and the still more hazardous enemy. Since the beginning of the war, the makers of camels have sent more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. But now with demobilization in progress, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Lake City, Florida, U.S. Army Old Farms Convalescent Hospital, Avon, Connecticut, U.S. Naval Hospital, San Diego, California, U.S. Marine Hospital, Buffalo, New York, and Veterans Hospital, Mendota, Wisconsin. In your honor, men of Air Transport Evacuation Squadron 1. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week. Our rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. You made quite a hit tonight, Costello, as a line tamer. <laughs> That's nothing, Abbott. If the people in the studio audience will wait till the program's over, I'll do some stunts on the flying trapeze right over your heads. No, no, not that. This guy weighs a ton. If he falls on you, you'll be a free spot. Get out, everybody. Get out. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't run out of my circus. Your circus? Why, you fathead, you don't know the first thing about a circus. You couldn't tell one animal from another. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Tell me, Fatso, what's the difference between a horse and a mule? Well, there's really only one anatomical difference. A mule is a hybrid animal with elongated ears. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, I had the right answer that time, didn't I? Yeah, but only another jackass would have known it. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, Jimmy. Be sure to listen in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your T-Zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a T. C-A-M-E-L-S. Question. What pipe tobacco is smoked in more pipes year after year than any other tobacco on earth? Answer. Prince Albert tobacco, of course. Because Prince Albert is choice tobacco, crimp cut to burn slower and cooler, and specially treated to remove tongue bite. For more smoking pleasure, put some Prince Albert in your pipe and smoke it. Saturday night, be sure to listen to Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry. You'll hear Red Foley, Grand Ole Opry's sensational new singer. He's got a voice that's romantic as moonlight on the mountains, warm as southern hospitality. And the way Red Foley sings our great American folk songs makes mighty fine listening. Remember Grand Ole Opry Saturday night on NBC with the Duke of Paducah, Minnie Pearl, and Red Foley. Be sure to listen at this very same time next week for another Abbott and Costello show for Camel Cigarettes. Thursday night is All Star Night on NBC. Stay around now for Rudy Valley over most of these stations. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.